morning, everyone. I hope that everybody is having a wonderful day. I am getting ready. I'm getting ready to head out to the thrift store. I have a few things I'm thrifting, which is always kind of a challenge, but always kind of fun when you have certain things that you're looking for. I'm going to my girlfriend's house for Easter with a bunch of other girls and a lot of them have kids so I want to do like a thrifted fun Easter basket. They said their kids don't really eat candy like they have fruit snacks and things like that. They're pretty little so if I can find like vintage books and toys it's kind of the vibe that I'm going for. I also have another event that I need to thrift some dishware for. I don't want to say too much because it's involving friends and I don't want to say too much. I don't even think it would really matter, but yeah, just want to keep things under wraps. Oh, I just saw one, two, three on the camera. I've been seeing that a lot lately. I don't know if you guys are into like angel numbers, but I've been seeing one, two, three or one, two, three, four successional numbers recently. And I've always felt that to mean that I am on the right path. And I do feel like today more than ever, I've felt like this culmination of a lot of the things that I've been working on. So it's always fun to have those little reminders, even if it's something that you don't yourself believe in what's the harm in having a little positivity flooded into your life so I am getting ready to drop off a journal and then I want to hit two thrift stores today but I have a lot of other things to do too so we'll see what transpires and that's it let's go <laughs> So I haven't really been looking for clothes that much just because, you know, I'm on a mission. But of course when I'm at the thrift, I can't help but look at certain things. And I wanted to show you these little vintage heels that I found. They're so freaking cute. They give me Chanel vibes and they're Bruno Magli. They're made in Italy. So I just feel like these are absolutely perfect. And that was an exciting find. Here's the hair and that's what they look like. These are definitely coming home with me. They're seven bucks. I also found this hat. It's like a 95 US Open tennis hat, which I just think is cool. The colors are cool. I don't usually like baseball caps like this, but I'm gonna see if Sam wants it. And then of course found some vintage denim that I have to try on, so let's give that a go. This is my third thrift store of the day. I don't usually do this, but they're all kind of by each other. They're within like a 10 minute drive radius. I'm trying to get a lot of stuff done. The last place was kind of a dud. Everything was super overpriced, but they're doing a 50% off sale tomorrow. So I'm gonna stop back then and see if I can get some of the things that I found. I did get some denim because I'm always afraid people are going to snag it, but let's see what this one holds. Take two, everybody. Yesterday was kind of a flop at the thrift store. Well, that's just not even really true. Southern Thrift was definitely the most successful. That's why I go there. I get people asking me all of the time, where do you like to thrift in Nashville? And Southern Thrift is definitely my favorite spot. I just feel like, I don't know, maybe it's a comfort level thing where I know the layout. I know what I can expect there. And generally, I feel like they just have a good variety of things. I like other thrift stores for other reasons. So Music City Thrift wasn't a complete flop. I got a great pair of vintage 501s, which I can find a lot of 505s, a lot of 550s, but 501s are kind of hard to come by. So I snagged those. I know I sound like a broken record, but they're getting a little overpriced. I went into Music City Thrift the other day and I found admittedly an original piece of art. I'd seen this artist in a lot of different estate sales as well. I think she's either a local artist or something. I forget her name. If I can remember, I'll put it on the screen. But the thrift store wanted $300 for the piece. Mind you, when I opened up Google Image Search, a piece of the same size, it was a big piece too. It was like... I don't know dimensions, but it was really big. Yeah, it sold for like $4.75. So I mean, I understand what they're saying, but like, come on. $300 for thrift store art is just a little outrageous. I made myself a smoothie. This has been my latest fixation. It's just a really nice way to get in a bunch of greens and veggies, and it's yummy and it's satisfying. I've been doing a new recipe though, sort of like a tropical smoothie as the weather gets a little bit warmer. It looks green because of the spinach, but really it's like mango, pineapple, strawberry, banana, peaches, it's like all sorts of fruits. And then usually I make it with coconut water, but I'm out, which is sad because I've been using coconut water to make matcha lattes as well. So all that rambling to say, 
I'm headed back out to the thrift. I'm going to stop at my friend's store that she manages. Oh, I just saw my neighbor, which is good because I had a dream last night that he died. So that's good. He's alive. He's well. Yeah, I'm going to go out to my friend's store. They're doing a little event. I want to head to some estate sales too if I can today for this dishware assignment that I am trying to procure. Last random sidebar. I was journaling this morning and I feel finally like... I have reached this culmination point and I sound like a broken record at this point but this is mostly for my clarification sake. I would say the last five-ish years have been a dissolution period where I've been shedding all of my previous identities especially most pointedly the ones that don't serve me so a lot of my people pleasing tendencies. I've said this a million times before but I think I was searching so desperately with so much poise and finesse for external validation to prove that I was enough and I'll leave it at that there are other videos where I go in depth talking about this I think something that big yes of course is going to take years to actually fully realize even then I don't think you can ever be done shedding growing evolving that's what the last five years have been like I've built businesses in that time restructured businesses in that time I've switched careers a few times and I think up until this point I have been really hard on myself about like not getting it right I was searching for a solution outside of myself well I would say within the last six months especially I have realized that the problem wasn't external the problem was that I wasn't witnessing the enoughness the fullness the the beauty of who I was internally which led me to seek external validation which led me to say it's not I'm not enough so I need somebody else to prove that I'm enough whether that's a job or a person's validation or approval or enough Instagram followers right it was like if I'm pretty enough if I'm interesting enough then I can be a good content creator but that's so backwards you create content because you already have everything in you to share what it is you feel compelled and called to share it's about having the courage to look within and follow those intuitive nudges internally instead of doing things because you think that you're on the right path and then looking for everything else in the outside world to validate that so the last six months have been about embracing the fullness of who I already am independent of any Thing I do. I just feel like the last few days especially I've really opened up to that and it's put me on an entirely new trajectory for my career. So this morning, all that to say, I did a reval, a reval, a re-evaluation of all my content. I started like a new content strategy plan based on what's energizing to me. I sat really quietly with myself and not about what everybody recommends to do as a content creator, but what I intuitively felt. All that to say, I just want to you know, let you guys know that I'm really excited about YouTube and about being myself and about showing you the things that I like and about going on long-winded little rants about little breakthroughs and evolutions that I've had. And so many of you have reached out to me saying that you watch the vlogs or that you love the vlogs. I just want to let you know that that is so encouraging to me. I know that the whole point of this is not needing external validation, but when I have people who genuinely say, I connect with that, thank you for sharing that. It just feels like these little points of fusion. You see my soul and I see yours, and that's magic, that's healing. Thank you for being along for this journey, and just know that there's more where this came from, and Instagram and Substack. Um, because you know I love to write and I love to share so yeah that is what we are in the market for so let's go ahead and go run some errands okay so I kind of hit the jackpot in there I kept meaning to film like take out my camera and film but it was kind of a smaller space and it was quiet and people were trying to like look at stuff but Whoever the state sale that was, she had some taste. I basically spent $50, got a bunch of art books. I'm really excited. I got a, a dishware. I'm really excited about this 
candle holder. I just think it's really beautiful and cool. They were gonna sell them as a set for 75, but one of them was broken, so I didn't want that. So I would say all in all, that's a success, and everything was 50% off. I guess it's 50% off day. I'm gonna head to Music City Thrift where it's 50% off for a Good Friday. And then head over to my friend's shop. Seems like the energy is good. Things are going well. The one thing I came back for have been completely ravaged. I don't quite know how that happened, but they're not here. I figured I would show you the art in question. That piece right there. They have another one over here. It's just not really our style. Okay, just kidding. I found one, not the one that I wanted. I wanted this other really nice one, <laughs> but it's gone, so. You do what you can. This is the risk you take by not getting it day of. The line, you guys, I wish I could express to you. I mean, I could probably just show you. It's actually insane. So we'll see if I even end up staying here. We'll see. I had to abort mission. I can't even begin to express. $3 teacup was not worth it. I'm actually gonna look if there's more state sales because I just feel like that's better pricing and better luck. And that was quite literally wild. I like could not believe that. <laughs> not squash, yes. Right. Because some of them are bigger than others. Okay, I'll, I'll carry it horizontally. Yeah. So that is the definition of you win some, you lose some. I went over to my friend's store and had a few tacos, even though that was the whole reason I had this movie was to not have the tacos, but then I got to the taco place and the taco man was so nice. I ordered one taco, he gave me two tacos. Of course, I ate both tacos. That's just how these things go, you know? I searched another estate sale and it was really close to the store. So I just popped over here and it was a total win. I am sourcing, I don't know why I'm thinking it's like some big secret, but I'm sourcing teacups for my girlfriend Anna Grace's bridal shower and I got all of them, different ones, great ones for such a good deal. And I ended up finding a really cool vintage Betsy Johnson dress as well. So today has been a success. All in all, I'll show you everything once I get home, but my camera's about to die, so see you soon. We are back from a day of thrifting, estate sailing, exploring. Got home, cleaned the house, spent some time with Pete. I should say I straightened the house. I didn't like deep clean it or anything. And now I figured it would be as good a time as any to give you a little haul of what I found thrifting, show you this little Easter, thrifted Easter basket I'm putting together, give you a little glimpse into that. So let me find a place to put you down. That's about as good as it's gonna get. You can see little dinosaurs in the frame because these are part of the Easter basket. Nothing too crazy today. So at the first estate sale, I got this stack of books plus one more, which the camera is sitting on. A candelabra. Let me go get that so I can show you. This is the candelabra. It's not really the style of our house, which I realized more when I got home, but it was cool, silver. It kind of reminded me of Go Our World. If I ever host like a dinner party, I feel like it'll be perfect. They had two of them, but one was broken. And so I was like, can I just buy the one? It was $75 for both of them, 50% off. So what is that like 30 to 50? And then I just bought one. So I think this, this was like $15 and these go for like a hundred bucks a pop. So silver made in England. I just thought these were cool. So right now I'm putting them on my bar cart. And then some of the books I got, this was a dollar. It's introduction, introduction to the world's gemstones. I just thought the cover was really cool. When was this even published? It's not even like woo woo, like crystals. It's literally just gemstones printed in England. I don't know. I just think it's like really cool. So I loved that. I'm just going to add it to our little book stack over here for a dollar. I really couldn't refuse. It's really fun too. Sometimes if the covers of vintage books aren't cool, which this one is, so I'll probably keep it on. You can take off the covers and usually they have really nice like printed parts too. I got this Klimt book. This was like six bucks. This woman must have been like British because she had a lot of, or this man, British things. I love Klimt. You've seen his work, The Kiss like all gold of the people kissing. I just love this. I thought this was really cool. Again, I'm gonna go in our book stack. I didn't even see what the inside looked like. Oh, same thing. I also love to use these old coffee table books to like style around the house. I don't like to get like random ones. I like to get things that we're like interested in. This one I thought was so cool. It's called Glass Animals. What I really loved about it was the typography. I just think that is so cool. 
and nice. This one was $9. And then I got these two big print books, which my idea was that, yes, we can use them as books, but also if we ever needed art for our walls, we could take one out and frame it. So I got this MC Escher one, which I thought was really cool. And then I also got this Monet one because obviously beautiful, gorgeous. I love the size, so I figured those were great. And I thought they would be great just like styled somewhere. So those were the books that I got. Oh, and then I got one teacup. Floral, very tea appropriate. The second estate sale was where I really hit the jackpot on teacups. I needed 12. And each of these was $5 with the saucer. So I figured that was such a steal. These aren't even the best ones. You can see they're just all sorts of cute little thrifted one. I'll obviously wash them all. And then I'm gonna put local tea in them. Something kind of spiritual because Anna Grace is pretty spiritual. This is fun, these are all from England. They're all just different and fun and cute. So, I mean, the bridal shower is a tea party, so I feel like this is perfect. The last other thing I got from that estate sale with all the teacups, it was interesting. I was listening to the gal who was hosting it talk to somebody else and she said that this was like day two of what would likely be like five different sales for that particular house. It was just like the stuff that they went through initially. So I'm definitely gonna check back because they weren't even like really diving into the furniture or anything. But I saw this dress hanging on the rack and I was like, oh, that's cute. Just like fun, it's my colors. This was $15, but then I looked at the tag and it's vintage Betsy Johnson with the butterfly. I just think that is so cute. And I think that's really it from the estate sales, it was a pretty lucky day with the teacups for the tea party plus this i spent 65 dollars at the second place i'm gonna put together this thrifted easter basket i saw this on tiktok of this mom who did this and she had collected things you could tell for like ever but she had stamps and puzzles and vintage toys and i think she put one candy treat in her son's easter basket and i thought this was such a good idea because holidays can get so expensive and i don't think you need to spend bukus of money to have a really beautiful easter basket so i'm going to show you this one i'm putting together for my friend's son here are some of the things that i got i got these little dinosaurs at the thrift for six dollars it came with two other dinosaurs but i kind of just liked the vintage looking ones so i just kept those i got these like star wars sunglasses my friend's son is three he's not gonna know what star wars is but just like a fun pair of sunglasses this is actually the most expensive part of the easter basket i got this from my friend's shop it was like 10 bucks for the two and that was on sale but then at the first estate sale i got this beatrix potter treasury of stories which we just had like a showing of of Beatrix Potter art at the Frist, which is the Modern Art Museum here in Nashville. And so I just thought that was a lovely nod to this. I think this was a dollar fifty. And then from the actual thrift store, I got this I Wonder book, which I just thought was really cute. It was like full of curiosity, like do trees have dreams? Like just really fun thought starters to talk about with her son. So that's really the basket. I'm gonna put it together and I'll show you what it looks like in the end. Oh, I forgot. I also thrifted this little fruit. I guess these are vegetables basket as well, which I loved. My friend owns a canning company and she's all about food and food preservation. So I just thought this was cute and sweet. So let me go ahead and put this together and then I'll show you what the final product looks like. This is the final goodie basket. I guess it doesn't look quite so different than when it was all disassembled, but I added it up without the like paper stuff in the bottom. This little goodie basket came out to less than $15 and it's just thoughtful and cute and curated. So just another testament to the fact that gifts don't have to be expensive for them to be thoughtful and sweet and just something that I think people will like. So I'm excited to give that to her. I'm also responsible for bringing a crudite board because like I said, my friend is really into food and food preservation. I'm not just gonna buy one. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to the farmer's market tomorrow morning. They have one walking distance from my house and it's actually so good. So I'm gonna get the hummus from there and maybe any local veggies that I can score some carrots, maybe some celery. You know, it's starting to warm back up so things are starting to be back in season. And then anything else, I'll just go to the store and source. Okay, we ready? We got everything? All right, let's go. Okay, please exit now.
Good morning, everyone. We are headed off to the farmer's market. It's a gorgeous day outside. The farmer's market is, what would you say, Sam, like six blocks from our house? Yeah. And it's arguably one of the biggest farmer, oh, well, I don't know if it's the biggest. <laughs> It's always a fight to get Pete to put on his leash. He's an Australian Shepherd, so he's like a herding dog, so he'll stay close. I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's a super nice farmer's market. So I think I mentioned yesterday, we have to pick up some hummus. There's this specific hummus stand that I wanna get hummus for the crudite board, and maybe we'll get some like carrots and things like that, but yeah, just getting a little bit of exercise. I'm going to yoga in like an hour and a half, and so I wanna try and get this knocked out so we don't miss the farmer's market. really close to like a local um, grocery store called the turnip truck they had everything we needed and I actually found the hummus that I was looking for that I would have gotten at the farmers market so it all ended up okay I also have been wanting some reishi tea because my uncle and his partner visited us they left us the tea that they had left over and this brand reishi tea was so good and so I just wanted to get some more um, of that this is the brand Rishi. This lavender mint looks kind of nice, so I might go for that. Thank you for shopping. In typical Tiana fashion, we're running a little bit late. It's just been a jam packed Sunday. Today was the longest run I've had to do in my marathon training thus far. I ran eight miles and I would be absolutely lying if I said it was easy. It was hot, it was heavy, it was slow. Well, I shouldn't say slow because, you know, everybody's pace is relative, but it, for me, it was a slow run. Directly after the run, uh, we went into eating lunch and then we like got the crudite ready for this little Easter event that we're going to. So it's just been a jam-packed morning, but all good things. I wanted to show you, I added a couple of things to the Easter basket. Basically these bath crayons that I got from Target from like the little dollar section. And then they had this like animal scratch art. So more activities and things to keep the little ones busy. Here's the crudite. I don't know how much I'll actually vlog at the event because, you know, people's kids and their privacy, it's just, you know, something that you wanna be conscientious about. But, just wanted to give you the updates on where we're at. Yeah, see what we get into. 